I want to thank all of you for joining me for another Bible study here on the Newfound Faith channel. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcasting service, I want to thank you for joining us at newfoundfaith.org as well for the third study out of the six series study that we are doing where we're taking a look at the six great warnings that we find in the epistle that was written to the Hebrews. Our study this week, we're going to be teaching from the, we're going to be focusing in on the fifth chapter of Hebrews. We're going to focus in on just a few verses there in the fifth chapter, right there towards the end of the chapter, where we're going to be taking a look at scripture that runs from the 11th verse through the rest of the chapter, from the 11th verse through the 14th verse. Now, though it only seems like we're only going to be going over a few verses, you know, you may think this is going to be a short study. I tell you that this is a very powerful study that we're going to be taking a look at here today. Now, right here from the start, I do want to make a mention. The goal that the writer set out to accomplish again with this letter that was written to the Hebrews, that was written again uh, to a crowd of Jews who had not heeded the gospel. If you remember the first study that we had out of the second chapter of the, of the letter to the Hebrews, you'll recall that the writer said, we must be earnest in heeding the word of God, heeding the gospel. I want to bring that back up because right there at the start here in the fifth chapter, when we look at scripture that runs from the first verse through the 10th verse, we'll see where the writer speaks again of the desire of Christ, desiring to minister Christ to those who had not heeded the gospel of Christ. There in the first verse through the 10th verse, we will see where the writer speaks of the excellence of Christ. Again, as he had once did uh, in the second chapter, in the first chapter as well, where in the opening chapters of this epistle, we will recall where the writer spoke about Christ and the angels. And he compared Christ to the angels in saying that Christ has a more excellent name than the angels. Christ he is the express image of, of the Lord. He again is God in the flesh, is what the writer explained. He explained that Christ is the sovereign one, the one that sits at the right hand of the Lord and is watching over all things. And again, the reason why the writer was doing that was because the writer had the desire for the Jews to, to heed the word of Christ. They would heed the word of angels, as we saw in that first study of this series. And so he had the desire that if you're going to heed the, the word of angels who are, again, simply ministering the word of God, then you should heed the word of God's only begotten son. Now, we skipped over this script, this scripture in the third chapter of Hebrews in, in our study last week. But if you take a look at the third chapter of Hebrews, and you look at the scripture that runs there from the first through the sixth verse, you'll see that, that the writer began to compare Christ to Moses. So you'll see that specifically mentioned there in the third verse, where in the third verse there, the writer said to the Jews there that Christ, this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Again, the writer was essentially saying to the Jews, look, if you heed the word of Moses, who again, as a prophet, was simply receiving the word from the Lord and then taking that word received from the Lord and then saying it, speaking it to the people, the writer was saying, if you're going to listen to Moses, then why aren't you listening to the only begotten son of God? The writer again does that there in the fifth chapter. Again, when we take a look at the fifth chapter, you look at that scripture there, from simply the first through the fourth verse there. You'll see where the writer was comparing Christ to another. This time the writer was comparing Christ to one who serves in the role of high priest. Specifically, we will see Aaron's name mentioned there in the first through the fourth verse there in the fifth chapter. To where, again, what the writer is trying to do, what the writer is trying to express to the Jews, the desire is for the Jews, if you are going to heed the word of the one that serves as the high priest, if you would heed the word of Aaron, the writer is essentially asking the question, 
why haven't you heeded the word of God's only begotten son? Again, the first that the first study that we had in this series was about neglecting salvation. The writer did not want the Jews to neglect salvation. The writer did not want the Jews to be neglecting God's only begotten son and the word that was shared. But that's what they were doing. We saw that they were neglecting salvation. And in our study last week, we saw that in that neglecting of, of salvation, that their hearts were beginning to harden. And if their hearts would begin to harden, we will see the writer touch on dull hearing here in our study this week. So we'll see there as we begin to dive into the focus scripture again for today, which will be coming from uh, the fifth chapter of Hebrews. We're going to start at the 11th verse and we're going to work our way through the 14th verse. We'll see there in the 11th verse that the writer expresses there to, to the Hebrews, to the Jews there, it says, of whom we have much to say. That's talking about Christ. The writer is essentially saying, we, those who, again, desire to minister Christ, he includes himself in that, says, of whom we have much to say. They have much to say about Christ and hard to explain. It is hard to explain Christ to the people. So again, in total, I know I keep diving there in the 11 verse explaining what something means, but let's read it in full there. It says, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. So the writer, again, coming off the heels of, of what you can read there in the first through the 10th verse, we see where the writer and then others who are ministering the gospel as well, where they desire to teach Christ and they, tr they desire to teach Christ and in far greater depths than just, you know, the icing on the cake. They, they wanted to teach Christ at greater depths, but they were unable to do so. And again, as we have seen there from just the first through the fourth verse, we see where the writer is trying to compare Christ to the one who serves in the role of high priest. And it's saying essentially that Christ has more glory than one who serves in the role as high priest. And the reason why is because, well, Christ is God in the flesh, and one who would serve in a role as high priest is merely a man. And so we will see there in the fifth verse where the writer says, Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Christ is the high priest. He was ordained, he was made, he was set to be the high priest by God. And then we'll see there in the sixth verse, again, that Christ is more excellent than mere man that would serve in the role of high priest, where the writer said, as he also says in another place, this is the Lord saying this about his only begotten son, you are a priest forever. Mere man can't serve in the role of high priest forever. Aaron is not still living in the world today to be the high priest of Israel, is he? No, he died a long time ago. But Christ, he's still alive and well. He, again, sits at the right hand of God. So he's a wonderful high priest. All of us have a wonderful high priest in Christ. And again, to be more excellent than mere man, he still serves in the role of high priest today, and he will be serving in the role of high priest tomorrow. He will serve in that role forever. And this is something that, that the writer and other ministers desire to make known to the Jews who, again, had not heeded the gospel. And, and I've expressed this the past couple of weeks because I want to make sure this is understood very well, that in the early church, there were both Jews and Gentiles. There were Jews that was in the early church. There were Jews that did heed the gospel, and they did sincerely. I want to make this clear as well. They sincerely believed in the gospel, and at the same time, there were Jews in the crowd that merely professed to be of faith, just like there are many today that say that they are believers, but they don't move. They don't live by faith. There were many Jews that were that same way, who the writer, as we have seen for the past couple of weeks, the writer has been trying to get through to them. Again, faith is more than the profession. The writer was trying to get these Jews to to be more than the professed believer. The writer was trying to get them to sincerely believe. And so 
the writer desired to teach them more. But something, again, is very grave that is said there in that 11 verse. Again, of whom? Of Christ, we have much to say, is what the writer said there in 11 verse. But he points out there, the writer points out, that it's hard for those that are ministering, it's hard for those that were teaching Christ, that was preaching Christ, it was hard for them to explain Christ. Was it hard for them to explain Christ because they did not understand Christ? Absolutely not. That's not what the writer is saying there. The writer was running into the roadblock that, that many ministers and pastors and preachers and, and those who are of faith that would go out and, and, you know, try to give a testimony. The writer was running into the same roadblock that many of us run in today to where we desire to, to teach, we desire to preach Christ. And someone will say, well, y'all do it. You, you're doing it right now, pastor. But there are many times to what we desire to, to teach and what we desire to preach, we are unable to do so. Is it because we ourselves are limited in, in our knowledge and our understanding to be able to teach and to be able to preach that subject? I hope not. You know, if you are a preacher, then you should certainly be studied up on the subjects that you are going to preach on, right? You should certainly be studied up on the subjects that you are going to teach on, right? So the roadblock that many of us run into today is dull hearing. Okay, the writer said there, we have much to say about Christ, but it is hard for us to explain. Even though we are knowledgeable about Christ, even though we have received the gospel, we have studied the gospel around the clock. If you studied as much as I do, if you're in scripture as much as I do, then you may know what I'm talking about. We have much that we desire to share, but we are unable to share in greater depths. And there are a lot of people, they mock, they say, oh, well, the pastor is just going to preach that same sermon that, that he preached in, in December or in November or or back in July of last year. Well, have you ever stopped to think that maybe that's the only thing that he can preach to the, the, the crowd that he is preaching to? As harsh as that may sound, that is often the case to where we may be only able to teach and to preach the, the basic principles, which is going to come up here in a moment. Yes, you have heard about Christ dying on the cross and how he rose from the grave. You probably saying to yourself, oh, yeah, pastor, I hear that one all the time. Well, are you able to receive anything of greater depth than that? And again, that's going to sound very harsh, but that is a question that many of us have to ask and answer today. Whether or not our heart is ready to receive the fullness of the word whether or not our soul is able and ready to receive the word in, in a more complex manner, in more depth. What I love, and I've spoken about this with my brother before as well, and you've heard me express this as well because we talk about this every now and then. I love preaching. I love preaching a whole lot, right? But I truly love being able to teach Sunday school. I truly love being able to teach Sunday school because, yes, I can go over basic principles, but I can also introduce more complex uh, thoughts spiritually within the Sunday school lesson as well. Now, you may not you may not be able to get that, you know, from watching the YouTube videos because they're only about 20 minutes long or so. But when I'm teaching the class for about 45 minutes to, to an hour, we are able to dive into scripture. And we're able to talk about uh, whatever lesson, the subject, whatever it may be that week, we're able to dive into it in, in finer, in more details than, than what I'm able to do when I'm trying to sum up a lesson uh, for YouTube, right? And, and what I love about the Bible studies as well is that, again, like I, I've, as you often hear me say, is I love to be able to dive into the scripture. I love to, yes, cross-reference. I had, to, I had to teach one of the members at the church about this. Cross-referencing, it allows us to get a fullness of, of Scripture that we are going over rather than the simple. A lot of times I ask questions and, and I'll get simple answers in return and, and I will have the class dive deeper into the answer that they're giving. 
Because when we can dive deeper into our answers, when we can dive deeper into our thoughts and, and dive deeper into our scripture, we can get a better understanding. We can, we can grow in our knowledge and we can grow in our wisdom. And that's what the writer desired to do with the Jews here. They had an understanding about God, but they did not have or receive the fullness of God because they had not accepted his only begotten son nor the gospel. And so for in order for one to truly be of faith, we must accept God the Father. We must also accept God the only begotten son, God the Son. And therefore, if we accept God the Father and God the Son, we are able to receive the Holy Spirit. God in three persons. We, we have to receive the fullness of God so that we can truly walk by faith. And that is what the writer desired here with this epistle that was written to the Hebrews. That's what we saw in the second chapter. That's what we saw in the third chapter. And that is what we see here in, again, here in the fifth chapter, where the writer again expresses there in that 11th verse, we have much to say about the Lord. We have much to say about his only begotten son, but it is hard for us to explain since you have become dull of hearing. And so somebody may be wondering right now, well, what does it mean to be dull of hearing? If you haven't already opened up your dictionary to look up that word, let's let's define what it means to be dull, right? When one is not dull, I look at Merriam-Webster here, dull is defined as lacking sharpness of edge or point. It's not sharp, it's not pointed, right? It is dull. Another definition there is mentally slow, slow in perception or sensibility. So if we have to think of what it means to be dull of hearing, it means that one is essentially not a being attentive, right? They are unattentive. They essentially don't care for uh, whatever it is that, you know, may be said at that point in time. They, they are showing a lack of interest. They are showing a lack of care. One who is dull of hearing, they aren't paying attention, right? If we had to sum it up in, in, in just the, you know, summed up terms there, it would essentially be that they don't care to listen to whatever it is that is being said. So again, the writer said, we have much to say about God. We have much to say about God's only begotten son, but it is difficult for us to, to share these things with you because you don't care, because you aren't being attentive to what it is that we have to share with you. So again, it's, it's very grave what was happening here uh, with, with the Jews here. Because again, we have seen where they were neglecting salvation, they were, their hearts were becoming hardened. And what we start to see here are these levels. I did a study a couple of years ago where I spoke about the three levels of faith. And unfortunately for all of you who, who may be listening to the audio of this only, you're going to miss this chart that those who are watching on YouTube will be able to see. There are three levels of faith where one doesn't believe or they have little faith. And, and a lot of times people that are on that level, they they waver back and forth uh, in their faith. And, and it, you have to get off that level if you desire to see the heavenly kingdom. You don't want to be one who wavers back and forth because eventually one wins out. And, and most of the time, the one that wins out is the world not having any faith at all. Now, what I'm introducing here is another chart to add on to that. We're going to expand because what we're starting to see here is that there is, again, a way to salvation, a way to, to the kingdom of heaven, to holiness and righteousness. But there's also a path, a way to condemnation. And, and what we're starting to see here in, in these, these studies, with the first study being neglecting salvation, and then the second one being hardening of the heart. And now this one with dull hearing, we're starting to see the way to one ending up being condemned eternally. With the first level down, if you will, I have a, the, the, the graph going down to condemnation. The first step being neglecting salvation. And then the next step below that 
from our study last week would be the heart that is hardening. Okay, and then there in the third level, we have dull hearing. So as you look at that graphic there, you could consider that, again, these warnings, they're all essentially danger signs as you would be going towards that, that eternal condemnation. It's like a stop sign, a warning sign. You know, if you're neglecting salvation, that sign is saying, hey, stop neglecting salvation. If you continue in your neglecting salvation and, and your heart is beginning to harden towards the gospel, that danger sign, that sign that pops up, saying, hey, stop, stop hardening your heart. Turn back from hardening your heart. Go backwards, right? And if you go beyond hardening your heart and you begin to grow dull of hearing, that warning sign, it comes up saying you've reached another level. Turn back. If you keep going beyond this level, you may run into that condemnation that, again, is eternal which again is essentially the end result of, of all of it. If you if you fail to heed the gospel, that is essentially the end. Condemnation, eternal condemnation. Now with that in mind, we'll take a look there at the 12th verse and we'll begin to see the, the failure of growing dull of hearing. Well, we see there in the 12th verse that the writer, the writer wrote, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, again, speaking to what the Jews should have been. Notice, notice the tense that is used there. Okay. By this time, it's saying this is where you should be, right? So for by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. So when we compare the tone, because it's, it's when we get to this study here, it's, it's almost as if the tone has shifted, right? From the tone that was set uh, in the first study, where we were looking again at the neglecting of salvation, right? There was a tone of, of disappointment, right? And, and here we, we see a tone that it almost becomes a bit harsh in tone, right? Because again, the writer says, by this time, this is what you should be doing. You, you ought to be teachers, is what the writer is saying to the Jews. And so this, attention, this essentially takes us back to the desire that God had for the children of Israel. I have referenced this scripture recently uh, in the 19th chapter of Exodus. Again, if you look at the 19th chapter of Exodus, and you take a look at the sixth verse, you will see where in that chapter, God, he was speaking to Moses, and the Lord essentially said to Moses that, I desire to give the children of Israel my law. There was already a covenant between the Lord and the children of Israel by way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob who was later named Israel. That covenant being that they would he, they would take possession of the promised land. There was a land that was promised to Israel. It was promised again to Abraham and to Isaac, right? The children of Israel, they inherited that promise. But when they were freed from the bondage of Egypt, and when they made it to Mount Sinai, the wilderness of Sinai, the Lord desired to give Israel his word. He desired to give to Israel his instructions and his law. And when you take a look at the 19th chapter of Exodus, and you look at the sixth verse, you will see where God says in that scripture that he desired for the children of Israel to become a kingdom of priests, that they would be a holy nation. And priests, when you think about the role of priests, and, and again, we shared this in a recent study. I think this was in the first study. The role of a priest is to serve others, not to serve themselves, but but they serve others. Okay, they, they would take the, the offerings of the people and they would offer them up to the Lord. So they would serve the people on God's behalf. They would essentially set be the example for the people in order for the people to, to move in a manner 
that would please the Lord, that would be holy and righteous in a manner that the people would be able to worship the Lord, they essentially would, would have been stewards that would show people the way to, to the Lord. That is the role that all of us today as sincere believers, that is the role that, that we should be serving in today to where we live as living testimonies of the Lord. I said all the time that you don't have to go out and, and verbally tell somebody about the gospel. That may not be your gift. You, you may not be of good speech, but you can testify of the Lord by the way in which you live. All believers do this. Actions, as you have heard me say time and time again, actions speak louder than words, especially for the child of God, for, for the believer. And so here, when we take a look at that 12th verse, we see a somewhat, again, harsh and again, disappointment, disappointed tone here from the writer, where the writer says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, the Jews should have been teaching. They should have been showing others the way to God. But the writer says, Yet you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. I mean, it's, it's, that's a very fascinating statement when you, again, think about it. Because what the writer is saying here, again, focusing in on the dull hearing here, is that the, the people, they had not reached their full potential. Not the full potential that they set for themselves, but the full potential that God desired out of them. Again, had they been obedient to the law, had they heeded the word of God, then they would have been able to live as the examples for the world to follow in order to be holy and righteous in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God. They would have set the example that, that all of us could, could follow, but they did not do that, did they? They immediately broke the covenant that they had come to an agreement with with the Lord when they worshiped the calf of gold, right? And, and God had to give the world his only begotten son. And his only begotten son now sets the example that one should follow in in order to become holy and righteous. So again, there, where the writer says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, yet you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, we find that the writer is talking about the results of dull hearing to where they did not heed the law. They did not live by the law as they should have. Right. And, th and then during the kingdom years where they had the prophets that, again, God would send to them and the prophets would, would call on the people to to repent. Right. To turn away from wickedness. What did the people do? Those who are of the northern kingdom, they continued to worship their Baals and the Asherahs, and, and they were conquered by the Assyrians. Those who are of the southern kingdom, when the prophets were saying, hey, you need to turn away from wickedness, what did they do? They continued to worship the idols. They, they continued to, to forsake the Lord, turning away from God. And what ended up happening to them? They were conquered by the Babylonians. And many of them were carried away into exile. And even after the exile, when there was a, a bit of a time there to where they were revived to, to worship the Lord, they eventually got back to their old ways of, of forsaking the way of God. And then we get Jesus coming into the world to, to, to give the world his light, the divine truth to the world, revealing that, that we have all fallen short of the glory of God and that all of us, again, we need to live in repentance. We need to heed the rebuke of God, turn away from sin, and again, heed his word. Well, what did they do? Many of them, again, they denied Christ. They did not heed the gospel. They mocked Christ, right? They, they had Christ hung on a cross, crucified, right? And so then the apostles came along and they again, they ministered the gospel. And again, what did they do? Well, some, they heeded the gospel. But again, others, they neglected salvation. They became uh, hard, hardened in their hearts. And then many of them began to become dull of hearing, right? And so again, we start to see the, the results there of dull hearing. 
and the results of dull hearing, it doesn't seem all that good, does it? Because we see here with the results of, of dull he hearing, we see that dull hearing, as I noted down here, it leads to one not fully receiving the word of God. It leads to one not receiving the, the full wisdom of the Lord. And so if you're not fully receiving the word of God, if you're not fully receiving the Lord's wisdom, how are you growing, right? And so we see, uh, again, another result here of one that grows dull of hearing. If you grow dull of hearing, your dull hearing, it can lead to a lack of growth. And something that you have heard me say recently uh, within within the Sunday school lessons I will share here now as well is that the Lord, he does not desire for for anyone to be stagnant. The Lord, when when he created mankind, he said to man that that we should be fruitful and that we should multiply. So so the Lord, he desires for us to progress. He desires for us to grow. But again, when, when one is dull of hearing and they aren't learning, how can there be any growth, right? And so where there is no growth, immaturity starts to kick in because one is not maturing. And so we live in a world today where there are a lot of spiritual immature people. They, they believe they, they know the Lord, but they don't know the Lord, not fully. They, they may have the basic principles, but even the basic principles, they don't fully understand. And then out of that spiritual immaturity, they will try to teach others what they don't fully understand. They will try to teach others what they do not know. And so that spiritual immaturity, again, that comes as a result of dull hearing. And, and from that spiritual immaturity, comes the furtherance of ignorance. And, and again, I, I want to be very clear here when I'm talking about ignorance, I'm talking about a lack of understanding. And, and that, that furthering of ignorance, it could lead to, to the worst of it all, which is a spiritual foolishness. And, and when one lives in spiritual foolishness, as discussed throughout the book of Proverbs, one will live in a manner to where they will begin to despise wisdom. They will despise, in other words, the word of God. So again, the, the warning sign of dull hearing, it, you know, when, when dull hearing pops out as a warning sign, one should heed that warning sign. Because what comes after that, and again, we're going to dive into this in, 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 in the studies to come, what comes after that is no good. So up to this point, the dull hearing warning is one of the greatest ones of all, to where you have to and you should heed the warning of dull hearing. So again, we'll see there in that 12th verse where the writer said, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. So what is being said there is that essentially the, the people, they weren't ready for anything that was complex really about, about the Lord anymore because they were unable to receive the gospel. They were unable to receive the only begotten son of God. It was difficult for them to understand. There are many people today that, like the people back then, they give up on the word of God because for them the word of God is difficult to understand. And so because the word of God is difficult to understand, there are many people that would say that something must be wrong with the word of God. Why is this so hard for, for me to understand? There must be something wrong with the word of God. It's, it's kind of like how math was back in the day uh, for, for quite a few people. Math was one of my favorite subjects in school. I enjoyed math, uh, but there were many people that struggled with, with math. They would say how hard math was and and with the difficulty of math, what happened? They would give up on math rather than 
trying to to take time to to learn math and and that's what happens with the word of god for for many people the word of god is difficult to understand the word of god could be rather confusing and rather than taking time to get to learn and to understand the word of god rather than putting forth the effort that's something else that we have discussed recently as well within this theory, this series of studies they will give up it reminds me of what happened with Jesus when Jesus proclaimed that he was the bread of life? Uh, when he proclaimed that he was the bread of life, he had many people that turned away from him. Uh, if we turn over to the sixth chapter of John's gospel, we will see in the sixth chapter of John's gospel, there in the 35th verse, where Jesus, he said to the people, I am the bread of life. Jesus, he said to the people, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He said that to the people. And many of the people, they they could not understand what it was that Jesus was saying to them. Now, we know that Jesus was saying that we should consume his every word. As Jesus said to the devil when the devil tempted him, and Jesus said that man cannot live by bread alone, but we must live by every word that proceeds from the Lord. That's what Jesus was saying. You and I, we are to di digest the word of God so that it becomes a part of us, so that the word grows in us, and so that we are, we will be able to bear fruit that is good fruit, fruit that is holy and righteous. We'll see there that Jesus and the Jews, they, 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 again, they continued the conversation where Jesus, he said down there, uh, after the Jews had quarreled among themselves there in the 52nd verse, we'll see in the 53rd verse that Jesus, trying to make the, the saying more clear uh, to the people, he said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And, and this was something, again, that, that greatly confused the Jews, even though I just said Jesus was trying to make it very clear to them. You see, they were thinking worldly and not spiritually. And so what Jesus was saying to them, it was difficult for them to understand. They thought that Jesus was telling them that they uh, literally needed to be cannibals, that they literally needed to eat him and they needed to then drink his blood after they finished eating him. That's not what Jesus was saying. He was, again, speaking spiritually about how they needed to consume his every word. And so we'll see that in that scripture where the people there in that scripture, they turned away from Jesus at that point in time. We'll see it there in the 60th verse, where in the 60th verse, the scripture says, therefore, many of his disciples, that's not talking about the 12, that's not talking about the closest disciples. It's just talking about at that point in time, Jesus had multitudes that were would, would follow him. They would diligently, I will use that word, follow him. They was always there. Uh, for the miracles, they would follow him over to the other side of uh, the Sea of Galilee to, to again listen to him, to, to try to see the miracles as well. But we we'll see there in the 60th verse, after Jesus had said these things, that many of his disciples, when they heard those things, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Well, if, again, you are of the Spirit, then you can understand the saying. But if you're thinking worldly, it is going to be rather hard. It is going to be rather difficult for you to understand. That's something that, again, many people need to come to understand today as well. So we'll see there, skipping down to the 66th verse, where again, after conversation, the people there says, from that time, many of his disciples went back. They went back and walked with him no more. They walked with him no more because the saying was difficult. The saying was hard for them to understand. They thought that Jesus was saying one thing when Jesus was saying something completely different. And even when they asked questions, they, again, they were thinking worldly and rather spirit, uh, rather than spiritually. And so, again, they gave up and they gave up rather quick. Because they didn't decide, hey, let us again stay with this and let us be diligent now. Let us study now. It, following Christ, it requires some effort that they weren't willing to put in. 
And so they turned away. That is when they began to, to neglect salvation. But we, we hear, when we turn back over to the fifth chapter of Hebrews, let's turn back over to the fifth chapter of Hebrews. And again, let us take a look there at that, that 12th verse. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. A lot of us, we, there are a lot of people today who, who desire to come to God. But again, the word of God, it is rather difficult for them to understand. Do not be ashamed with needing to, to learn the basic principles of the faith again. There are many people today who go to church every Sunday that don't have a grasp on the basic principles of, of the faith. And the reason why I say that is because the basic principles of the faith is to love the Lord with our whole heart. And in that love, we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But how many of us are actually living in that love, loving the Lord by loving our neighbors as, as we love ourselves? There are many who say that they are Christians, who say that they believe in, in the Lord. And they aren't walking by faith. They are simply professed believers. So if, if you can't handle the, the complex doctrine of, of, of faith, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, with, again, needing the milk. Peter, he said this in 1 Peter, the second chapter of 1 Peter in the second verse, that one should desire the pure milk so that they can grow thereby from the word of God. There's nothing wrong with, with feeding off of the basic principles, because when we feed off of the basic principles of, of the doctrine, the sound doctrine of God, we are able to, to grow by it. It is able to, to nourish us, right? And so we'll see the writer say there in the 13th verse says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for, for he is a babe, which is absolutely true. You know, again, if you're dull of hearing, then all you will be able to feed off of is again, that milk. But, you know, you look at babies, they, they can only feed off of milk for, for so long before they'll start needing some solid food, Right. So again, you can only live off of, of that milk for so long before the world will try you. And if all you have been feeding off of is the basic principles, the world will have its way with you. Because again, as we have seen within the temptations of, of when, when the devil tempted Christ, the devil knows the basic principles. He has an, he has an idea for, for the basic principles of the faith for which we ought to, we ought to walk by. And the devil will do his best to, to challenge you on the principles of your faith, trying to poke holes in, in your foundation. And so if your foundation is simply built up on the basics, it's not built up on, on much of a rock. Your faith, again, it must continue to grow. And, and again, the spirit, you must Heed the, the voice of the spirit. If, if you're not heeding the voice of the spirit and you're being tossed to and fro on that level of having little to no faith, again, you will find yourself tumbling down those steps towards condemnation. So in order for us to, again, grow out of being dull of hearing, our hearts must soften as we, we went over in, in our study last week. We must be humble to admit when we need that milk so that, again, we can grow in, in our faith so that we can acquire skills, right? As we'll see, say there in the 14th verse by the writer. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, you can't, you can't discern both good and evil if you if you aren't again growing in the word of god see spiritual discernment that is a gift that is a gift that that comes from the lord 
And not all who profess to be of faith have received that gift. Only those who are diligent in the word is able to, to receive this gift. Again, look at that verse there. Look at what it said there in that 14th verse. But solid food belongs to who? Those who are of full age, those who have been diligent in their studies, those who have grown in their, their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding by, again, being diligent in the word of God. Again, he said, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That is a gift. Again, I would ask today, do you do you desire to to be able to discern again right and wrong? What is holy, what is righteous from what is wicked, what is sinful, right? That's something that you should desire. And again, there are many more gifts that the Lord will pour out on unto you, that the Lord will point, pour out onto us. Again, if you are diligent in your faith, if you continue to grow in your wisdom, if you continue to grow uh, in your knowledge and in your understanding, the Lord, he desires to, to, pour, to pour those blessings out onto you. And so, again, if you are one who has been dull of hearing and after listening to the study, you're saying, I don't want to go down this path. I don't want to go down those steps to condemnation. I, I want to work my way up to the kingdom of heaven. I encourage you today to get back into the word of God. Desire the pure milk of the word. And as you pour over scripture, and as you begin to receive the word and, and become attentive to the word, don't be ashamed to ask questions. Don't be ashamed to, to pray on, on your questions, to pray over your thoughts, because the Lord, again, he will reveal the truth to you by way of the Holy Spirit. That's the role that the Holy Spirit plays in our life, to lead us unto all truth. And as I have preached recently as well, God will surround you with wise counsel, those who understand his way, who you can also lean on as well. So you ought not be afraid to ever ask questions. You see, the disciples at one point in time, they asked Jesus, why do you speak in parables so often? You, you can find that over in the 15th chapter of Matthew's gospel, starting at the 10th verse and going through the 17th verse. They ask Jesus, why, why do you speak in parables so often? And many people have this thought and this idea in their, in their head that Jesus, he spoke in parables because they, they are easy to understand. When in actuality, I challenge you, those parables, they aren't easy to understand. Now, it's different for those who have been in the word and they have studied those parables for years and years and years and years. But someone who is new to the word of God, those parables, they can be rather difficult to decipher and to, to understand. Jesus, he taught those parables so that those who truly desire to know would come to him and ask questions. See, the Lord desires for questions to be asked. The Lord, he desires for you to seek that knowledge. Again, as I said recently, there are three means that the Lord, he, he desires to see out of you when it comes for, for your blessings and for answers and for solutions. He desires to see you ask and for you to seek and for you to knock on his door. So again, that's we ought not be ashamed of desiring to grow. Nobody knows everything. And the problem with those who are dull of hearing, especially at, at that point in time, and again, even today, is that those who were dull of hearing were, were many that believed they knew everything. And they felt that they didn't have to listen uh, to the gospel. And because they, they believed that, they ended up drifting away. They were easily led astray and they fell. That's not what the Lord desires for anyone. And then again, the writer certainly did not desire that for anyone as well, which is why this epistle was written in the first place, because he wanted those who would read this letter to know Christ, to know Christ is more excellent than even the angels or man, and that his word is the truth. It is divine truth and that one should heed his word. Okay. All right. So that is our study for this week in dull hearing. Very, very dangerous. 
very, very troubling. One who chooses to be dull of hearing. Don't you choose to be dull of hearing today? Again, soften your heart, receive the word of God. Okay? All right. So again, I hope that you enjoyed this study. I hope that you'll share this study with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our study next week where we're going to take a look at the next level beyond dull hearing. Okay? There's something truly tragic, again, behind those who grow beyond being dull of hearing. That is what we are going to be taking a look at in our study next week. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you're following here on YouTube so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon, Sunday school lesson, or a food for thought. Take a moment, follow today.